Well, if you're anything like me, when you're on the water, you are going to definitely be hard on your trolling motor batteries. Today I'm here on the Delaware River fishing with Rich Mummy. Rich is the Pennsylvania Regional Interstate Battery Rep. Rich is going to go over a couple of very important tips on battery maintenance, on charging, and on how to choose the battery that best fits your needs. Rich, you obviously, I'm sure, being in this business, you get a lot of battery questions. What's one question you get frequently? Well, when it comes to the marine or marine business, we get the question, what's the difference between a, a deep cycle battery and a cranking battery? Okay, so I'm, I got my trolling motor on my boat. I've got my wiring all set. I want to get batteries. I'm on the Delaware River here. I got draw coming out of those batteries with current, with high water. What kind of battery do I want? That's a good question. And a lot of times people ask, do I choose a deep cycle battery or do I choose a, a marine cranking type right. battery? And as you mentioned, with a trolling motor, we want something that can supply uh, smaller amounts of current over long periods of time. And that's what a deep cycle battery is designed for. Okay. So if I'm looking for the best choice battery for a cranking battery, what am I looking for? Well, there where we want to start a, start a boat and we want a high amount of cold cranking amps in a short period of time, that's when we would choose that cranking battery. Those batteries are designed, again, not for like a trolling motor where we have a, a long duration of short amounts of current. Here we want one quick burst of energy to start that boat. That's where we'd use a cranking or marine cranking battery. Okay. All right, Rich, I'm out on the river just about every day and I use a lot of my battery power throughout the day. I go in, I put them on the charger, I take them back out again, I keep doing that over and over and over again. What is a safe way to, to do that as far as charging batteries? What, what is right? What's the right way to go about that? That's a good question, Blaine. There's a lot of misconceptions about battery charging. Yeah. You'll go to one guy and he'll tell you, boy, you should draw those batteries all the way down till they're dead before you charge them. And others say you should charge them every opportunity. Well, believe it or not, the way you're doing it is the proper way. Okay. Anytime you discharge a battery, if we go out for the entire day today and we fish for 10 hours, we want to go back and charge those batteries. If we go out and a storm hits and we've only been out there for half an hour, we want to get back and charge those batteries. Every time we discharge a battery, the deeper we discharge it, the harder it is on the battery. So if we were to go uh, trip by trip by trip without charging batteries, we're actually reducing the amount of cycles we'll get out of that battery. So we call that opportunity charging. Whenever mm -hmm. you have the opportunity, if you can go back, park the boat, plug that charger in, that's much better. You'll get longer life out of your batteries. I like to hear that. I'm doing something right with my batteries. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know, man. I learned a lot. I I thought I knew everything about batteries. I've, I use them every day, but man, that's, that's good stuff. Thank you very much, Rich, for joining me today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Let's go fishing. What do you say? Absolutely. All right. So if you're on the water as often as I am and you want to stay on the water, use the outrageously dependable Interstate batteries. It'll keep you on the water and on the fish. Interstate batteries, the choice of Backwoods Angler TV.